Thank you for joining us. Um, we just left the uh, courtroom of uh, Judge John Maloney, Circuit Court Judge here in Montgomery County, uh, where he sentenced James Polk Jackson, uh, age 24, to a sentence of 30 years incarceration. Uh, his co-defendant, Ruben Ortiz, was given a sentence of 30 years to spend all but 24. Uh, Mr. Ortiz is 22 years old. Uh, both Mr. Jackson and Mr. Ortiz are from Montgomery County. Uh, the event that, that gave rise to uh, this matter being tried here in Montgomery County took place on May the 28th, uh, 2017, at approximately 2.30 in the morning uh, in, in, the, in, a, in an area very closely adjacent to the Days Inn uh, down, in, down in Silver Spring. Uh, the victim, Solomon Ajala, uh, 25, uh, died of stab wounds that were inflicted against him uh, by Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. Ortiz was an individual who did, in fact, strike uh, Mr. Uh, Ajala during the attack, along with several others, maybe as many as four or five other men, as well as another woman participated in that attack. Uh, Judge uh, Maloney actually made a comment during the sentences, sentencing of the last uh, suspect in this case, Mr. Ortiz, just a minute ago. This case really was about retaliation. It, it was about um, the law of the street. Uh, this case ended in the parking lot of the Days Inn, but it began uh, some hours earlier uh, when uh, friends of Mr. Jala and others actually were, were involved in um, the taking of marijuana uh, from an individual who, individuals that were involved in selling marijuana over by the metro station. Uh, sadly, I, I, I've mentioned this before, and as we're upstairs just before we come down here, uh, again we see you know, the, the public perception that uh, Distribution of marijuana is a nonviolent crime, but I'll tell you, if you stand where I stand, again and again I stand at a podium where uh, the distribution of marijuana serves as sort of the baseline or the predicate to what ultimately becomes a homicide. And so the distribution of marijuana, again, leads to a homicide here in Montgomery County. Uh, the defendants were convicted of second-degree murder after a trial that lasted more than a week. They were both tried together. Uh, the trial was conducted by... Uh, from my office by Patrick Mays and Peter Larson, who did an outstanding job on behalf of the government. Uh, the, uh, I will also tell you that, uh, as always, uh, we'd like to thank the men and women of the Montgomery County Homicide Division, uh, Dimitri Rivlin, who's well known to many of you for many cases, that Dimitri's done was along with uh, Maria Herrera, the lead detectives in this case, and I want to thank uh, those two detectives in particular, along as the Homicide Squad, with the job they did here. Um, Ms. Cisse, uh, Solomon's mother, uh, did have some thoughts that she wanted to express. I'm going to ask her to step to the microphone. Hello, my name is Khadija Tusise. I am the mother of Solomon Jala. And I, I just want to say thanks to the Montgomery County Police and thank you to the District Attorney's Office with every member that's involved in this case. And they work very hard day and night to bring justice. And I am so happy, I am so pleased, although it's not gonna bring my child again, but justice itself, so that these people can hurt any mother anymore, a mother, a sister, whatever it is. And I'm so thankful to Mr. Mace, Patrick, everybody was involved in this then. So thank you and thanks thank you. everybody. Uh, Mr. Solomon's sister has a comment. Um, I'm Haja Solomon's younger sister. I just want to thank again the state attorney, all the police officers, everyone that had an impact in this. We truly appreciate it and justice is served on behalf of my brother. We're happy with the verdict and we're happy that at the end of the day, Somebody deserved the consequence, and it didn't go in vain. Thank you. Kelly Rule, UCW 50, has a question. Yeah, you talked about how this has impacted every single day in your life. Could you just tell us again, you know, what this loss has done for you and your family? I mean, losing my brother has been hard. Um, you know, it's very hard on my mother. You know, she has sleepless nights, nightmares. She goes through a lot. Me, personally, I mean, I have my moments. I have my days. Nothing will ever bring my brother back, so that's the reality we have to live with. They have to live the reality that my mother will never hold her son again. My brother won't be at my wedding. He'll never meet my future kids. She, all that has to be held within example. So 
that's what it brings to our family. But we're taking it day by day and we're taking it as a process and we understand that we have to face our life now and this is our new life that we have to live.